So let me start by saying I had a lot of fun watching this and the chemistry between Tom and Mark is, you know, it's kind of good. You know, it's okay. Yeah, I find them pretty charming and uh, and lovable, those two. And I feel like they've really harnessed that Nate Sully dynamic from the games, which is uh, super important. Yeah, no, no. Th- listen, I, the, the reason this film works is because you believe in their relationship and they're both very good in the roles. Um, if someone has actually never seen anything you've done, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? Probably the first movie I made, which is Zombieland. And I think that was like, you know, for me, such a huge learning curve as far as what it takes to make a film and put together a great cast and capture a tone and deliver, you know, lots of comedy and lots of action, which seems to be my calling card these days. Uh, Uncharted has been in development since like the 1950s. Why do you think it's taken so long to get the movie made? I don't know. It all kind of predates me. When I read the script, I was blown away by, you know, the spirit of the movie. It totally captured the tone of those classic treasure hunting films like Raiders of the Lost Ark or National Treasure, which is a beloved genre for myself. And so as soon as I read the script, I thought it was amazing. So I couldn't I couldn't speak to what preceded me. But I know that as soon as I got involved, I was so excited to go make it. Uh, how did you guys actually decide on which like treasure hunt was going to be in this movie, if you will? Yeah, I mean, the Magellan story predates me as well, but I think that it was a an effort on parts of the on the part of the writers and uh, I'm sure the game makers uh, to come up with an original story specific to the film that's unique from the video game franchise, but has the same spirit of adventure that the video games are known for. There is a fantastic action set piece in this movie, which is the cargo plane with the the, the boxes coming out and uh, all of that. I can't imagine the challenges of trying to put this on screen. So can you sort of take me through the behind the scenes of why this was a sequence you wanted to put in the movie and just trying to get it on screen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was probably the the sequence in the film most inspired by the video games because it it was featured in one of the games, a very similar set piece. And so we had that as inspiration, both as a um, idea that we wanted to execute, as well as like an idea that hopefully fans would recognize and appreciate from the, the original video game series. Um, as far as the execution of it, I mean, it was certainly the most complicated thing I've done on an action standpoint, we use, in order to achieve the feeling of the boxes floating behind the plane, we use these things that they're, I guess they're called KUKA arms, and they're basically the robots that they use to make cars. And so the boxes were placed, there was five KUKA arms, and the boxes were placed on top of the arms, and that allowed them to be kind of in this fishtail kind of motion that as if they were hanging out of a plane and Um, obviously we didn't shoot it outside of the back of a plane. Um, and then it was just a matter of Tom and the stunt guys, uh, navigating that, uh, we had an incredible second unit director, Scott Rogers, who is his greatest strong suit is, um, rigging. And so he approached it with a really keen sensibility that allowed us to use gravity to help sell the reality of what the, uh, characters are experiencing. And uh, that combined with some pretty heavy visual effects allowed us to create hopefully what is a a really um, noteworthy and iconic action set piece. What is it like actually reading something like that in the the script and being like, like, does it sort of floor you? Like, wait a minute, how the F are we going to pull this off? There's a degree of that, but also there's excitement because so much action has already been done before like you know we've seen it all at this point and that i'd never seen before so i just got excited at the prospect of having the opportunity to make something completely original and you know exciting and fresh uh that hopefully audiences would appreciate uh i love talking about the editing process with directors because it's where it all comes together. Did you have a much longer cut of the film or was it pretty much like what people are seeing on screen is really, you know, you know what I mean? No, it's always a process. I mean, I think every director's cut starts out significantly longer than the finished 
version of the film. In this case, you know, we were well over two hours. Um, but I'm of the mind that movies are best when they're kind of really swift. Like if you look at my films, none of them are very long. You know, the first Zombieland was like 87 minutes. And I stand by, when I look at a listing of a film, if it's over two, two and a half, three, I don't know. <laughs> it makes me less excited about it. So I, I appreciate a swift film. And so as part of the editing process, I'm always trying to like cut it down to its essentials, boiling, boiling it down to its like best version of itself and cutting away the fat and just keeping it exciting and, you know, full of those great movie moments that, that uh, audiences love. Cause ultimately I'm making the film for the audiences and I want them to be entertained from beginning to end. Did you do any test screenings that impacted the finished film in terms of the audience saying, you know, like they, they wanted more of something or less of something else? Yeah, I'm a big advocate for test screenings and especially coming from a comedy background, there's nothing better than hearing a movie with an audience, um, which was a little challenging in this COVID environment just because masks are, an impediment, I feel like, to the experience. And so even just looking around a room and not being able to read people's faces, like, are they liking it? Are they not liking it? You rely more on audio cues. But since this movie features so much comedy, it was really exciting to hear it with an audience because the laughs were big and they were consistent throughout. And um, yeah, I, I really feel like at the end of the day, the audience is um, who we make the movie for, and and I want them to have a say in the finished version of the cut. Uh, you have an after the credit scene. What? When did you decide you wanted to have an after the credit scene, and was it always that scene? We always wanted an after the credit scene. Um, we had. I don't know if I'm speaking out of school. April can tell me if I am or not. But um, we definitely had a after the credit scene. Uh, always intended to tag the movie and kind of provide a, a suggestion of Nate and Sully's next adventure. Um, the one that we shot was kind of compromised because of the schedule. We just couldn't make it as big or as exciting as I wanted it to be. And then when, when it played, it was just kind of like a ho-hum ending. And I really wanted something that got me excited, certainly. So um, I was a big advocate of reshooting that and, um, and uh, and without giving anything away, you know, there's a signature look to one of the characters that's featured in the tag. And that um, was always a key part of the tag at, from in both versions. And that was super important to us was allowing the character to kind of grow into his more familiar look from the games. Um, and so that was super important as well as just the suggestion that Nate and Sully will be off on more adventures together in the future. Yeah, the, the reshot version it, it, the, after the credit scene is very good. Um, I don't want to do a spoiler, but I do want to ask you, there is something else um, after the credits, if you will, like a, a character. Um, did you cast that person uh, specific? Like, is that person who's in the movie, the person who will be playing the role in the future? Or is it sort of like grade, so you can't really tell who it is, if you know what I mean? I feel like um, time will tell as far as what the future holds for that character and who may uh, embody him. Uh, my, la my last question for you, because I'm already out of time. Uh, assuming this movie is a hit, is uh, have you already been thinking about possible sequels and stuff? Is it something that you're interested in pursuing as a director? Yeah, I make no assumptions uh, there. You know, it's a crazy world that we live in these days. So I certainly am the last person to make assumptions, but I will proudly say I'd be thrilled at the opportunity to make a sequel. And you can't help, uh, you know, working on this film for two years, I can't help but imagine different adventures that these guys might find themselves on. Um, and I'd be thrilled to to figure out a way to bring those to life. But ultimately, the audience will decide that's something that they're excited to see. Yeah, I think I think Tom is a good luck charm. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you. Thank we'll you so take much. all the good luck we can get. Uh, but yeah, Tom, Tom's pretty amazing. And we were lucky to uh, have him at the center of this film. 
I gotta go. Thank you so much for your time. I really sincerely hope it's a huge hit.